And Miami's finally got all their starters back, and they feel the same way. Yeah, two teams desperate for a win here at the end of the season. Both come in on losing streaks. We are underway on a Wednesday night in the ACC. And Miami all smiles. They start with the ball. Two starters back into the lineup. Ruga Poplar and Nigel Pack. So that's a big boost to the backcourt. Omir lines up a three and drills it to open the scoring. Just what we talked about. Yeah, he's a guy that you could drop off of previously. But he's now made 23 three-point baskets on here. Shoots a pretty good percentage. In his first two seasons playing college basketball, he only made one three at Arkansas State. He has transferred to Miami and been terrific. Really improved his shot. Boston College answers inside Devin McLaughlin. And that's been a problem for the Hurricanes all year long. They're just not very big. And McLaughlin, I mean, he's big, strong, and he's really having a good year for the Eagles of Boston College. Hurricane starting five. We mentioned Poplar and Pack back in it. This is the first time in more than a month that Miami has had a full squad to work with. They've had plenty of time off as well. They last played last Monday on Big Monday in Chapel Hill without Poplar and Pack, and they played very well against a good North Carolina team. Well, you make threes, he can play pretty well, and Miami relies heavily on the three. Yet trying to break a seven-game losing streak tonight here at home against Boston College. McLaughlin, good pump fake. It cashes in. Boy, that was nice. I mean, I, he almost walked on that play. But when you make a pump fake like that, he took his time. That's not an easy shot to make. McLaughlin has all four for the Eagles to start tonight. Wide open three. Bensley Joseph makes BC pay. Wow, and Bensley Joseph had a huge game against North Carolina, particularly knocking down the three ball. He's maybe a guy you shouldn't leave out there. Jaden Zachary trying to shake free, lost the ball. Joseph tipped it away. He's an excellent defender. The steal and the three. <laughs> Bensley Joseph. What a start. Now, you wouldn't know by how they've come out in the first two and a half minutes that this Miami team is on a seven-game losing streak, the longest losing streak of the Jim Laranega era here at Coral Gables. Now, Jim Laranega, what success he's had. In fact, what success he's had everywhere he's been. He's not happy about something. I didn't really see what it was. Now, that banner... The 2023 Final Four from a year ago would not be hanging without Laranega. Boston College finding form, too. Both of these teams shot out of the cannon to start. Well, they're shooting the ball very well, and Harris scoring is good news for Boston College. He is a scorer who has struggled to score recently. Omir again open from three. Off the mark. The first... Miss shot of the night. And that is a break for Boston College because Quentin Post did not block out nor Chad O'Meara. And O'Meara, he's going to shoot the three, but he's going after the rebound. So just because he's out beyond the arc, you can't ignore it. Been a double-double machine here for Miami. Harris, step back three. Can't connect, but tipped in by Quentin Post. Excellent position by Post, and that ball came right off in the perfect spot. Sometimes that happens when you get great position. Yeah. <laughs> ball comes to you. Foul off the ball. Zachary Holden. Miami is a team that likes to spread the court. Omir is a very effective low post player, but he doesn't start in the low post. He doesn't set up shop down there and camp in there. They spread the court. They like to move the ball. They like to move players. And once they move the defense, then they'll put the ball down. They'll drive to the basket. There's nobody in the lane. It stays Miami ball deflected by Madsen, so eight seconds to work with here on the shot clock. And Madsen, even as he was playing defense, he was shouting at Ted Valentine, I never touched it, I never touched it. And Ted respectfully disagreed with him. 
And here's Pack, who caught the ball and traveled. Back into the lineup after missing the last four games. He saw that double team coming, and he was trying to beat it and just didn't get the ball down fast enough. Well, even the last game that Pack played, he was 0 for 7 at zero points, so trying to shake off some rust here early. Post of three. Got it. Wow. I mean, we've got some shooting going on in this game. And we said about Post his versatility, and that's one of the things that makes him so versatile is his ability to score from beyond the arc. Well, both of these teams are not shy to let it fly from three. Omir, kick out Cleveland. Nice fake, spinning into the lane. Regathers it. It finds Poplar on a three. He can't connect. Omir got his hand on that. Good tough rebound by Post. And the Boston College defense flying around here early. Zachary left it short. Well, he didn't know how Boston College would come out tonight after an embarrassing home loss to Pitt, 90 to 65 on Saturday. But they've come out with plenty of energy. They sure have. And uh, the Pitt is playing as well as anybody in the country. And good heavens, Pitt made 16 threes. It's hard to win a game when the other guys make 16 threes. Earl Grant, Boston College head coach, summed it up pretty good. They had a really good day, and we had a really bad one. Sometimes it's just that simple. Five minutes gone by, post, in the post. Good defense there by Omir. A good, day. Oh, and one-on-one -on -one defense. You can't double because he's such a good passer. Bensley Joseph leaves it for Omir. Post thought he got him on the other end. Instead, a foul called. Well, we build it as a great big man battle, and Norchad Omir and Quinton Post delivering five minutes in. When you're great, your game does the talk. In the ACC, our speech volume. Three of the last eight NCAA championships. 99 NCAA tournament wins since 2015. Eight NCAA titles in the last 22 years. Six of the top 30 winningest programs in Division I. Most of any kind. It's not bragging if it's true. Greatness is what we do. The ACC accomplished greatness. Bravo! For buying a treadmill? You use the Quicksilver card from Capital One. It's simple, with no annual fee and unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. That makes you the hero of every purchase. Yeah. And heroes don't take the stairs. Is this a parachute? Ah! Ah! What's in your wallet? When you have a history of greatness, the real challenge starts after the finish line. When victory alone isn't enough, you raise your bar, keep dreaming, and go beyond the limits of what you ever thought possible. The new 2024 Ridgeline Passport and Pilot, part of our most rugged trail sport lineup yet. From Honda. Here we go. Introducing the all-new TD Clear credit card with no late fees and no interest, just a simple monthly fee. That's how credit can be unexpectedly human. Call 1-844-TD-CLEAR for details about credit costs and terms. Don't just take classes, take charge. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com. Find the perfect gift and celebrate the people you love. Wow! Wow! That is must-see TV. Give her the ball! Are you kidding me? And it's a tie game. He dropped it! I can't believe what I am witnessing. The streak wins! Now 
Well, we're less than a week away. The ACC men's basketball tournament tipping off on Tuesday. This is the projected seeding as we sit here tonight. It is, and of course, we've still got a week of basketball left to play. And, you know, Virginia, they've sewn, they haven't they have sewn up number three, but they have sewn up at least number four. So Virginia will get a double buy. Duke will get a double buy. Uh, North Carolina will get a double buy. And if you're a team looking to make a run, Miami and Boston College, they are both going to play on that first day. you got to look and see what the matchups are in a tournament time. It's all about matchups. And it'd be very interesting, you know, Miami is not, they don't have a great deal of depth, but they could certainly go to the ACC tournament and win a couple of games. They can shoot the ball, and you know, if they get their starters back and healthy, this is a Miami team that is much better than their record indicates. Well, that's why these two final games here, Boston College and then Florida State on Saturday for Miami, just to get something going now that they're finally healthy. They have a full squad available for Jim Laranaga for the first time in more than a month. Well, they're, they're out there. Uh, Poplar still battling an ankle injury. A foul called. That'll send Donald Han Jr. to the line for three. Well, this is a situation where George gets caught behind that screen, and sometimes you're just caught. That's the best you can do, so you block out. You don't want to commit a foul out there, particularly not against a three-point shooter unless you feel you got a really legitimate opportunity to block the ball. That's just a bad decision. And this gives the Eagles a great opportunity to extend their 7-0 run. Ooh, way off the mark from hand. Looks like somebody opened a door and blew that one away. <laughs> and Miami has gone scoreless for the last three minutes. That well, much better from hand. Well, those are hands free throws 9 and 10 in ACC play, so he doesn't get to the line often. It was four for eight coming in, is one for two on this trip, but he'll get a third. Both of the last two look better than the first one. Mm -hmm. yeah, they go full court pressure for the first time tonight. And they're just, uh, you know, that's sort of a la Florida State. They're trying to steal the inbounds pass, but if they don't, then they back off. Keyshawn George into the game. Fellow freshman, Nwoko, cashes in with his first touch. Well, he did a nice job moving without the ball, caught the ball well, and then he just pinned Mighty on his back, and there's nothing Mighty could do. Harris trying to shake free into traffic. It's blocked. Bensley Joseph going coast to coast to lay it in. Uh, Claudel Harris forced that one, but again, he is a scorer. He's going to try to take the ball. I think he was looking for a foul right there. But when you take a bad shot like that, it's almost like a turnover. Joseph has eight of the Hurricanes, 13 early. An offensive foul called against Mighty on the screen. Well, and Mighty gets trapped down low and doesn't really do a very good job keeping Nwoko away from the basket. And now again, this is just a force by Harris. He was looking for a foul, and it brought results in an easy basket. You want to make Miami play against your set defense every time if you can. Lob. Nwoko couldn't handle it. Reattacks. Couldn't convert. Miami doing a good job getting back on defense so far. And fade away. Can't hit it. The hand's been very aggressive since he's offensively since he's come into the game. Great pass. Count it plus the foul. Michael DeWoko to the line for an and one. And you know, you talk about aggressive offensively. Nwoko is a guy who is strictly an inside player, but he does a great job catching in traffic and then with the left hand. That's really a good, good job catching the ball inside. And I mean, if he's going to be able to play like that and give him those kind of minutes off the bench, that saves Omir not only from having to play so much, keeps him out of foul trouble. That's a real good low post threat. 
and that's crucial for what you were just talking about, that if you go down to D.C. and want to win five games in five days, you need that bench production. Wow, without any question. And after Boston College went on a 7-0 run, Miami back with a 7-0 run of their own. Zachary trying to end that. Way off the mark. You know, Zachary, he's a pretty good three-point shooter, or has been lately, but I still think that's a little early in the shot clock. Poplar, the floater doesn't fall. Rolls around the rim, and Poplar has the ball back. And again, Nwoko got his hand on it, which is what kept the ball alive. Shot clock down to seven. Keyshawn George, a deep three, buries it. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Wow. Earl Grant's got to wonder what's going on. Pitt lights him up for 16. That's the fourth three-point made by Miami so far. But this is a Miami team that relies heavily on the three. In conference play, 38% of the points come from beyond the arc. Eagles trying to answer with a three of their own. Offensive rebound post, kick out Madsen, sends it right back inside, and that's a turnover. Now the Hurricanes on a 10-0 run, four threes against the Eagles early, including this one from the freshman, Keyshawn George. Here's the thing. No one can reach the pinnacle of success on their own. you got to find a difference maker, and I've got mine. With every team I've coached, I bring Bob in. He'll talk to the staff, he'll talk to the players, build up their mental game then I can focus on building a winning team. I know I can't do it on my own, so I surround myself with expertise where it matters most. When you have a history of greatness, you keep dreaming and go beyond what's possible. The new 2024 Ridgeline Passport and Pilot, part of our most rugged trail sport lineup yet. From Honda. I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed to get a deal on these memory supplements, then forgot to cancel. Yeah, well, you know, recognizing a bad deal is a part of the journey. Yes, Eva, would you like to share your breakthrough? I got AT&T's best deal on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and got to choose my plan. Oh. Yes, we don't make you sign up for the top tier plan to get our best deal. I still haven't gone. I subscribe to get yeah, a deal. Yeah, know. Get the newest Galaxy on us with any of our best plans, guaranteed. The new $1.99 Sonic Crispy Tender Wraps are here for a limited time in bold flavors like Hickory Barbecue or Cheesy Baja. Give yourself some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic Crispy Tender Wraps. So this is your first time buying a home? Yeah, this is first time doing any of this. Everything is in the email I sent you the other day. The email. And if you haven't looked at it yet, let's go through it together. Expertise, okay. just one of the many ways an agent who's a realtor works for you. I wait tables, but last week I built a field hospital. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. While I go to school full time, while I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. Really want my vape. I'm signing up for This Is Quitting. These texts have been really nice. Write a breakup letter to your vape. From Florida. It's officially one week of me, no nicotine. They said that they were proud of me. Text vape free NC to 88709. Lindor, made to melt you by the Lint Master Chocolatier. First, they're sour, and then they're sweet. Sour Patch Kids. Now, Jim Laranega with a full squad available and healthy tonight for the first time in more than a month. You take a look at Miami, 11 of their 18 ACC games missing a starter, 2-9. and nine when a starter is missing four and three when everyone's playing. And it's just not a matter of having a guy injured and missing a game. You have people injured, they miss practice. It's hard to practice that way. You know, not only in terms of numbers, but you can't get any rhythm going if you don't know who you're practicing with. Big time jam, Michael Nwoko and Miami on a 12-0 run. And Nwoko has come in the game and scored seven points for Miami. And on the season in ACC play, he averages 2.6. Yeah, he has come alive. Quinton Post going right at the freshman. Beats him. 
Uh, Post, I'm surprised he was able to keep his pivot foot. That's pretty good pressure by Nuoko. But again, he's on his own in there. They're not going to come and double team him. Pack, step back three. Left it short, post the rebound. And interestingly enough, we're halfway through this first half, and that's Pack's first field goal attempt of the game. He averages 12 a game. And he's had a quick trigger tonight, misses that one, falls to Madsen, and he hits it from three. Now, Madsen, he's a guy who's been very hot from outside the three-point arc since he started, since he began starting. And Donald Hand Jr., he's a very good percentage three-point shooter in conference play. I just don't know you want him taking those early in the clock. Joseph's had the hot hand for Miami. Lost the ball, falls on it, trying to keep it alive, and he does. Poplar down the lane. It rolls off, doesn't fall. Offensive rebound, stays with Miami. Poplar trying to finish the possession from three, and he drills it. Boy, Boston College just not able to claim the defensive rebound. And Poplar created that whole thing because he forced Post to come over to help, and then nobody was available to block out Nuoko. Harris goes with the three. Post wanted him to pass it to him after he set the screen. Again, Harris is a scorer. He's going to look to score as his first option. Poplar, pull up, pop, off the mark. And again, Miami with the court spread out. They like to attack you off the dribble. They're going to call Quinton Post for a hook. Battling inside with the freshman, Michael Nwoko, who's been terrific tonight. He's trying to get in there, and you can see that left arm, he just comes around, pushes him out of the way. And we had the same view the referee has, and he's going to call that a foul every time. And that's two on Quinton Post. And keep in mind, when they took him out of the game before, that's when Miami went on the first 10-0 run. How good has Nwoko been tonight? He's been everything you would want him to be. I mean, again, we said he averages 2.6 points per game in ACC play, and he's already got seven. Comes out of the games for Norchad O'Meara here, but there's been no drop off with O'Meara off the court for Miami. Well, now Boston College playing a little bit smaller lineup. Their seven footer post is out, and Prince of League Bay is in in his place. Shot clock down to 10. McLaughlin going at O'Meara. Hands off for Harris. In a double team, finds McLaughlin for three. Can't connect. McLaughlin actually shoots the three pretty well. Joseph transition three, Ooh. he misfires. Cleveland the offensive rebound, and Miami's cleaning up the glass very well tonight. Now Boston College really having trouble getting their defensive boards in order. You know, but again, that spread that Miami does forces you to cover a lot of ground on defense. And sometimes it's hard to get back to the basket to rebound. And Miami is a team not noted for defense, but their man-to-man -man defense has done a nice job keeping pressure on the ball. Shot clock down to two. A league bay lost the handle. Pack. Too much on it. O'Meara oh, tracks it down as he often does. And the offensive rebounding continues to be a strength for Miami tonight. But again, Boston College got their hands on that ball. They just couldn't claim it. Miami with eight second chance points already tonight. Looking for more here. Pack down the lane. Floater too strong. And it's going to be Boston it's, no, no, College. It's, it's going to be off. It's Miami's yep, Miami ball. ball. As it should be. Yes. The Hurricanes comfortably leading by eight early. Here's the thing. No one can reach the pinnacle of success on their own. You've got to find a difference maker. And I've got mine. With every team I've coached, I bring Bob in. He'll talk to the staff. He'll talk to the players. Build up their mental game. Then I can focus on building a winning team. 
I know I can't do it on my own. So I surround myself with expertise where it matters most. All roads lead to Mercedes-Benz of South Charlotte, the number one volume Mercedes-Benz dealer in North and South Carolina. People come from all over to purchase the best in luxury automotive. Friendly faces, first class facility, a car buying experience unlike any other. Isn't it time you see why all roads lead to Mercedes-Benz of South Charlotte? Charlotte's premier Mercedes-Benz dealer. I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed to get a deal on these memory supplements, then forgot to cancel. Yeah, well, you know, recognizing a bad deal is a part of the journey. Yes, Eva, would you like to share your breakthrough? I got AT&T's best deal on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and got to choose my plan. Aww. Yes, we don't make you sign up for the top tier plan to get our best deal. I still haven't gone. I subscribe to get yeah, a deal. Yeah, know. Get the newest Galaxy on us with any of our best plans, guaranteed. Coors Light? Oh shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. Saturday, what a loaded slate of college basketball we have for you. Final weekend of the regular season, five college basketball games Saturday on ESPN. We'll talk about the two Sonic blockbusters, number one Houston hosting Kansas at four, and then Saturday prime time, North Carolina and Duke. <laughs> that is a pretty good slate right there. You said five, those two are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, now, no doubt about it. In the last seven minutes of the game, Boston College has gone two for nine. They've turned it over five times, and they've given up five offensive rebounds after a five for eight start. Boy, O'Meara's got a mismatch inside. Pack didn't see it. Now has a second chance to go to him. Instead, takes the three and misses the three. Boston College has not scored since the 10-26 mark. And keep in mind, Quentin Post is on the bench with two personal fouls. So it's going to be hard for Boston College to get anything going on the inside. Now he's been everything for the Eagles all season long. And you can see they're basically playing without anybody in the low post. Sort of what Miami does. You spread the court, try to move the ball. Five seconds to shoot. Jaden Zachary lets it fly. Can't connect. And a push foul called on Prince of League Bay. And even though you don't have a your big guy post on the inside, you can't just throw the ball around the perimeter. You've got to do something, whether it's driving the ball or cutting through or something, to get into the lane area to force that defense to collapse. And this has been a Miami team not known for their defense this season, but it's looked very good in this first half against Boston College. Scoop to the hoop, Keyshawn George. You know, once he gets passed on the outside, he doesn't look like he's, you know, remarkably quick, but he's quick enough, and once he gets past you so long, it's hard to catch up. Zachary trying to spin his way free and draws the foul, attacking Bensley Joseph. There's not even a screen here. Hand anticipates the screen and moves to his right, and when he does that, Joseph goes to the defender's left and goes right past him, and Hand just didn't quick enough to catch up. Jaden Zachary trying to put an end to a scoring drought that's lasted four minutes and 27 seconds here. And what he did was he took the ball inside. You know, you don't expect your point guard to post up, but when you need to get the ball inside, he has a bit of an advantage against Bensley Joseph, and he took it. 
And how important does Earl Grant think this stretch is? Well, with two personal fouls, Quinton Post is back in the game. And Miami's a team that likes to create mismatches and exploit them. So let's see if they go after Post with O'Meara. Boston College showing a little zone press, but now drop back into the man-to-man. -man. Double screen for George. The freshman now working on post, finds Pack, open three. Misfires, Omir had the offensive rebound in his hand and let it slip. Now keep in mind that Pack hadn't played in a while, and so, you know, his shot, he's just didn't take a shot for the first 10 minutes of the game, and the ones he's taken since have looked a little rusty. He's missed four straight games, and again, the game before that, he didn't score against Clemson, so it's been three and a half weeks without a made bucket for Pack. Tough take inside Zachary, couldn't finish. Well, again, that's a really nice adjustment by Boston College to post up Zachary. Joseph misses the layup. Gets his own miss, though. Well, Omir tipped it away. Omir is just relentless on the offensive board. You have to earn every single rebound going against Omir. And Poplar cashes in two more second chance points. That's now 10 in his first half. Well, it's, you know, Boston College, their first defense isn't bad, but you don't, you're not on offense until so you have the ball, and you can't get the ball until you get a defensive rebound. Miami's opened up a 10-point lead. Boston College has not made a basket in more than five minutes and 30 seconds. Pack got a hand on it. McLaughlin went for the ball and got a piece of it. Well, now that was a very interesting sequence. And oh, and Pack goes down and he's had knee problems. Holding that left knee. Take another look. It's McLaughlin and Pack tangled up. Well, he, it looks like he actually got tangled up with his own guy. Looks like he hit mm -hmm. Bensley Joseph. And again, Pack has missed games. Oh no, he just he just came down right on the ankle, right on the foot of McLaughlin. Signed to Woko, who's had a very productive first half. Miami's done a nice job reversing the ball, moving it from side to side. That's really tough on a defense. Cleveland with the shot clock down to two, lost the handle. They say it stays with Boston College, though. Ted Valentine making the call underneath the basket. Miami, a 10-point lead, 357 remaining in this first half. Here's the thing, no one can reach the pinnacle of success on their own. You gotta find a difference maker, and I've got mine. With every team I've coached, I bring Bob in. He'll talk to the staff, he'll talk to the players, build up their mental game. Then I can focus on building a winning team. I know I can't do it on my own, so I surround myself with expertise where it matters most. Introducing our all-star lineup, the Camry, the new Grand Highlander, the RAV4, and the Tundra. Toyota, undefeated on the road. What are you guys doing? Learning that HBCUs are not only about networking, there's also secret handshakes. That's cap. HBCUs do not have secret handshakes, right? You mean this secret handshake? Cool. Wow. These guys are almost Cricket 5G fast. We're kidding. There's no such thing as a secret handshake. Or is there? Whoa. That's how you do it. Look at all this bacon. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. 
Arby's, we have the meat. your ultimate playground at visitcalifornia.com I get to love you forever I'm yours forever I do every kiss begins with K Number one, Houston hosts the Jays. Yes! Oh, snugs it down! Then, it's round two of the game's greatest rivalry from Cameron Indoor. That is the exclamation point. Duke Carolina delivers again. It's two top-level rematches to end the season. Experience number 14, Kansas, number one, Houston. Then, number seven, North Carolina, number nine, Duke. Saturday on ESPN. Take a look at our Wooden Watch presented by Principal. We just showed you the Duke North Carolina game upcoming. Three of the four players on the Wooden Watch in that game. Nice takeaway for Boston College. Claude L. Harris fouled attempting a dunk. He'll get two at the line. That's only the second turnover by Miami. You know, Boston College has not made a field goal since the 10-26 mark. This is actually not a bad foul by Joseph. So a bad foul would be if you get down and fouled him and he made the basket. The only ones with those when someone's going for a dunk, you worry that it could be no, a no flagrant question. foul. But that one was clean enough to just send Harris to the line for two. It has really been a struggle on the offensive end for Boston College. What do you attribute that to? Well, I think Miami's playing really well on the defensive end. I think Quinton Post being in foul trouble has sort of discombobulated the Boston College offense. Zachary, you know, ha has not been a big factor in the game, and I think Boston College is much better when Zayden, Jaden Zachary is a big factor. I think for Miami. Zachary hadn't made a field goal. Yeah, no, he struggled tonight. I think the Hurricanes playing with a lot of passion, getting those two players back. Poplar, who misfires there, and Nigel Pack, getting a full seven days of practice time before this game. Madsen, foot on the line, turnover. Well, Madsen is another guy that the way he shot the ball recently, not the last game, but... Boy, that left foot of his is <laughs> well out of bounds. You know, it's funny. You see so many of those calls these days. And, you know, they did extend the three-point line, but the court is the same width as it's always been. You talk about Matson, Dan. He had seven made threes in the first meeting between these two teams. He's been a non-factor in this first half. Ripped away by Zachary. That's a good job with the double team. And that's when you have to double team and you poke at the ball when the big guy is dribbling it. Now let's see if Boston College can get anything done on this end. Well, it's been seven minutes and 37 seconds without a made bucket. And that drought continues for BC. You know, Earl Grant, his guys have played hard. They just haven't played very well at this point. Well, not many teams could go seven minutes and 42 seconds without scoring a basket and still be down single digits. Well, there's no question that uh, they could be down much further, and if they can get their offense in gear, they got to feel good about their chances. Now, the, the shot clock reset, and I don't think it should have. No. Because Miami never had possession of the ball. It's back down to 13. Okay, 13. There yeah. you go. 
But Miami has scrambled. This is a perfect example. They have been scrambling around very effectively on defense. It's been hard for Boston College to get anything that they want on offense. That's another dangerous play. I think if Robinson realized where that ball was, he could have gotten it. Post attacks and scores. First made basket in nearly eight minutes for BC. And see now, if you're Earl Grant, you like the fact that Post has scored, but you have to wonder, do you keep him in there? Well, Boston College takes it away. Madsen hesitates and drives in and misses the layup. Now, Madsen, I mean, he tried to avoid having the shot block. He just takes that up on the side, on the right side of the basket. Maybe Omir fouls him, but he, you know, he tried to make a really circus shot and didn't work. Timeout called by Miami. Two minutes remaining until halftime. Hurricanes up seven. When you're great, your game does the talk. In the ACC, our speech volume. Three of the last eight NCAA championships. 99 NCAA tournament wins since 2015. Eight NCAA titles in the last 22 years. Six of the top 30 winningest programs in Division I, most of any conference. It's not bragging if it's true. Greatness is what we do. The ACC, a con now, Boston College began this game shooting 5 of 16 since just 3 of 16. And Quinton Post, like he normally does, leading the Eagles at scoring with nine points tonight. Well, he's got nine points, but he's got those two personal fouls. And so what do you do here if you're Earl Grant? Do you keep him in the game and risk a third foul before halftime, or do you take him out? Well, and that's, that's the question for Earl Grant because Post has been so central to their offense. Well, he is shooting four of five from the floor. The rest you know, of the team shooting four of 17. You may want to take him out on the defensive end. And I think he's trying to take him out, yeah. but uh, Alique, Alique Bay is at the table, but he was late reporting in. But that was good defense by Post to make Joseph stop. Here's Matthew Cleveland, goes baseline, scoop to the hoop for two. And that's how you do that underneath scoop shot. <laughs> Madsen's attempt about a minute ago didn't come off quite as well. Post lines up the three, can't connect. Uh, no offensive rebounding potential for Boston College on that one. Poplar can't knock it down. And that was a good block out because O'Meara was really fighting in there. Harris. That rattled in and out. And again, you take that quick shot. If it goes in, it's great. But if it doesn't go in, you don't have any chance to get the offensive rebound because you haven't moved the defense and they're in perfect position. Both of these teams in the last two minutes, quick triggers coming up and down the court. Harris driving off the window and in for two. And we saw Harris force one before. That wasn't a force. He did a really nice job. Got his head and shoulders past Poplar and just went straight to the goal. The Earl Grant with a use it or lose it timeout. He elects to use it. Eagles down seven. Meet Ron. Ron's been looking forward to March since last March, but oh, how he can nail a software solution. You need Ron. Ron needs a retirement plan. Work with principals so we can help you with a plan that's right for him. Let our expertise round out yours. Introducing our all-star lineup, the Camry, the new Grand Highlander, the RAV4, and the Tundra. Toyota undefeated. Now, for as poorly as Boston College has shot it in this first half on the road here in Miami, they're only down by seven, Dan. Well, and you're absolutely right. And Miami, Miami has not taken advantage of some of the turnovers because Miami, excuse me, Miami hasn't shot it particularly well either. And the reason Earl Grant called that timeout was to get post out of the game. 
It's about a four second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Madsen pressing out on Bensley Joseph. And now Cleveland off to the freshman. Mismatch Keyshawn inside. George. Oh, now nice job by McLaughlin to switch back on O'Meara. Deep three by George, and he's way off the mark, and it gives the ball back to Boston College with seven seconds here. And since the clock is stopped, they can get post back in on offense. And last year, last year that play that George just made, falling down after the three, that would have been a flop. And this year, Ted Valentine just told him to get up. <laughs> <laughs> Harris with three seconds left in the half, off to post. Good if it goes, and it does. Quinton Post beats the buzzer, and Boston College cuts it to four. And that's wow. Pack. He's missed four games, but he was 0 for 5 in the game today. And the two games he played before he went out with his injury, he was 0 for 7 and 0 for 8. So he had missed his last 20 shots for the Hurricanes. And so, you know, they will obviously miss him because he's a capable player, but he hasn't really been offensively productive in the last couple games he's played. Ooh. Madsen a three off the post miss, and he comes up empty as well. Well, Madsen is a guy who made seven threes against these guys, against Miami the last time. He made, he's made one tonight. And Poplar draws the foul. Harris got him. So Jim Laranega and Miami made a big point. Finally fully healthy, trying to build something going into the ACC tournament, and now you lose pack for the second half. Well, and Bill Courtney... The Miami assistant told us before the game, even we showed you there are 11 of the 18 games they were missing a starter, but in some, well, some of those seven games, a starter went out early right. in the game. <laughs> you know, so and they are two and nine in those games without a starter. So they have struggled with injuries this season. You see Pack getting ice on his left knee. You just hope for his sake. And you mentioned the shooting struggles, that he gets a chance to be back on the court sometime this season. You don't want to end your year shooting as poorly as he has. Well, you don't want to end your year hurt not no, being able not to play. And he was honored on the court before the game for senior day. He does have a year of eligibility left as well as Norchad O'Meara, so they can both come back. But if they don't, they were celebrated on senior night pregame. Great ball movement by BC. Ball stops with Harris, finally gives it up. Madsen from the other corner, and this time he hits it. Now he had more time on that particular occasion because of the ball movement you talked about. This is what Miami does, that little weave out front. They try to get you to commit, and then they go. And it's exactly like that. They get you back on your heels, and then once they've moved you around, they attack you off the dribble. Bensley Joseph leads Miami with 10 points tonight. Harris misfires, but Jade and Zachary in perfect position to clean up the spill. And that is Zachary's first field goal of the night, and it comes off an offensive rebound. Maybe that'll get him going for Boston College. Back to the three-man weave up top. Ten seconds to shoot. George in attack mode, working on Madsen for a double team. Oh, floats it up off that the window. In. Wow. <laughs> he is also stronger than he looks. Harris fading away. He hits it. Harris is a scorer, and that's what he does. And you think, wow, that might be a tough shot. But right at the end, you know, Joseph dropped off of him, so he had a wide open shot. Poplar passes out the shot, takes it in, misses the layup, though. Well, and unlike in the first half, Boston College has been able to get those offensive rebounds. Post ties it at 38. Quentin Post has been automatic from that spot. Well, he sure has. And I said offense, I meant defensive rebounds. Those balls that were tipped around in the first half were generally claimed by Miami. Post has 15. He has knocked down three threes. 
Great pass. Oh, near. Rocks the rim. One handed flush. And that is only his second field goal of the game, Norchad O'Meer. Madsen off the screen. For three. Got it! Then Boston College in front. That was a very confident play by Madsen off the dribble under pressure. It's the Eagles' first lead since it was 13 to 11. O'Meara trying to answer from deep. Left it short. And again, Post didn't block him out. Had that ball gone right back to O'Meara, he'd have got it. Because Post wasn't in the way. Zachary kicked out Madsen. Missed it this time, oh. but tipped in. Quinton Post flying in. Post did a great job getting position on the inside. But lots of times a three-pointer will miss much longer than that. So that was a miss right at the basket. And Madsen here is going to pick up a foul. Now Quinton Post and Mason Madsen have taken over this second half. The Eagles outscoring the Hurricanes 15 to 8 in the second half. Norchad O'Meara. That dunked the bright spot for Miami, but it's Boston College leading by three. Here's the thing. No one can reach the pinnacle of success on their own. You've got to find a difference maker, and I've got mine. With every team I've coached, I bring Bob in. He'll talk to the staff, he'll talk to the players, build up their mental game. Then I can focus on building a winning team. I know I can't do it on my own, so I surround myself with expertise where it matters most. Movement that inspires. Sometimes it takes a different approach a meeting, so how does next week sound? to see the possibilities all around you. <laughs> yep. Yeah, what if I catch him first? Then what? <laughs> With Capella University's game-changing FlexPath format, get support every step of the way to help you stay on track. Imagine your future differently with Capella University. Hey, cover girls. Plant power? It's a game changer. Introducing the ultimate plant powered mascara, Hawkbeantopia. 300% extreme lush volume. Now in dramatic ultramarine black. Cleantopia mascara, ultramarine black. From CoverGirl. You really think you can get me to like dark chocolate? Without a doubt. Won't it taste bitter? Not this dark chocolate. Mmm, it's delicious. I told you it wasn't bitter. <laughs> From the Lint Master Chocolatier, discover excellence. Expect delicious. Halls, <laughs> breathe it in. Are you winning, Cheese? When you're with Amex Platinum, you can get access to travel benefits at fine hotels and resorts. Wow. Which means your dream trip becomes a reality. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Tip off your weekend with our next ESPN NBA Friday doubleheader. Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs host Anthony Edwards and the Timberwolves at 7.30 Eastern. And then it's the Bucks and the Lakers. Coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern. Now, Quinton Post has Boston College up by three here on the road in Miami. Post leading the way, 17 points, seven rebounds down. Another really good game for Post, who's had an outstanding year for Boston College. You know, we showed you his numbers before the game, that combination of numbers not achieved by anybody in this league since Tim Duncan. And there, that's a great tip away. Defense into 
almost offense, everything but the finish. Well, Harris couldn't decide whether he's just going to shoot it or dunk it, and he tried to do both and missed. And that sums up the season for Quinton Post. Makes a great play. Boston College should get two points out of that sequence, and instead, he stuck playing defense again. Joseph stepped back, missed it. Now, Boston College missed a big opportunity right there, but their defense bailed him out. You know, it's interesting, talking Quinton Post, the statistics are incredible. There's a fouls called on the floor. I think if Post were on a team that had a better than a 6-12 and 12 record, he'd be all ACC first team or no-brainer. And if they were really good, he'd be in the conversation as maybe somebody who could be the player of the year. Well, you know, R.J. Davis is in this league this year, and so it's going to be hard for anybody to be in the conversation other than him. But I agree with you about Post. But I would also say that there are a lot of guys in the ACC who have, have had outstanding seasons. We were talking earlier. We think it's as hard as it's ever been as Madsen drills the three from the corner to pick a, a top 15 players. The league, league is that deep. I think so. And what a pass by Zachary. Boston College playing a lot better in this second half. Isn't it, isn't it amazing how you play better when the ball goes in the basket? Eagles on a 13-2 run. And they are dominating the stretch of this game coming out of break. Boy, this is a 45-degree <laughs> angle, baby. I don't know how he got it through there. It's like a quarterback thrown over a lineman, and uh, they, they <laughs> missed by about an inch. Threaded the needle. And Boston College should have two more because of the missed layup by Harris. Largest lead of the game so far. Great pass from Post. Zachary kicks it out, and Harris draws the foul. That was some hard pass by <laughs> Madsen. I think Zachary did everything he could to catch the ball, which is why he didn't get it up to the basket. Suddenly, Boston College playing with an awful lot of confidence on the offensive end. But again, that's what happens when the ball goes in the goal. 18 points already in the second half. They just had 28 total of the first. Zachary, ball off his foot, ball back to Miami. And that's something they haven't done in the second half is turn it over. They really had some problems with turnovers in the first half. Yeah, seven turnovers in the first half. That's their first in the second. And George tangled up with Harris. Cleveland misfires on the three. And in this second half so far, Boston College doing a great job surrounding Norchad O'Meara, really making it difficult for him to get after the offensive board. Zachary leaves it for McLaughlin, who rocks the rim. The officials blow the play dead. No, no, they don't. They blow play dead. The basket will count. But there's a wet spot on the floor, and they're trying to address that. Everybody draw, everybody goes to Zachary, and nobody rotates down to get McLaughlin. When you're great, your game does the talk. In the ACC, our speech volume. Three of the last eight NCAA championships. 99 NCAA tournament wins since 2015. Eight NCAA titles in the last 22 years. Six of the top 30 winningest programs in Division I, most of any kind. Boston College has opened up an eight-point lead. The Eagles on a 15-2 run over the last four minutes and 30 seconds. Miami in desperate need for offense. George knocked away. Claude L. Harris, three on one, up ahead. Matson, the hot hand, can't connect that time. Well, he's got a hot hand, but I don't know that you pass up a layup. He got two three-point attempts, missed them both on that possession. Jim Laranega takes a timeout. Not happy with how his team is playing. In this second half, the Hurricanes once led this game by 10. Now Miami trailing by eight at home.
say hello to future you. You made some bad money moves. So no vacations for you. Never got a credit card with rewards. No way we'll never see your fjords. All these places will never go. Here isn't us in Mexico. Six of the top 30 winningest programs in Division I, most of any kind. It's not bragging if it's true. Greatness is what we do. The ACC accomplished greatness. Hey, you seeing this? If you don't use it. Just like this treadmill I bought that I keep saying I'll use, but never do. Yeah. Put your vision insurance to good use. Get 50% off your second pair. Book an exam today. If our beaks, we just have different priorities is all. Satellite free direct TV. I want to thank my mom and my son. Beautiful. your ultimate playground at visitcalifornia.com. The Deli Counter, where freshly sliced tastes best and Boar's Head reigns supreme. Held to the highest culinary standards, Boar's Head is your gateway to fresh and delicious at the deli. Crafted to perfection and freshly sliced to your exacting standards. Step up to the counter, see how the deli does fresh better, and Boar's Head does it best. Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere. You know, Doug, ever since switching to Workday, you've been a real rock star. Rock star? What do you know about rock stars? Are we the idol? I mean, where's the skin-tight leather? The shoes are leather, I Where's think. the unnecessary zippers? That thing! Billy, Billy, rock star is just how Doug feels when he uses Workday. Thanks, Rory. Uh, I'll show you rock star. Be a finance and HR rock star. Workday for a changing world. Billy Idol just stole your car. The Boston College in front impressively by eight here on the road, and it's been all Quinton Post and Mason Madsen. Well, look at those numbers, but let me give you another couple of numbers that Post and Madsen have made all seven of BC's three-point baskets. They're seven for 12 combined. The rest of the team is 0 for 9. Wow. And also the Eagles have picked it up on the defensive end because Miami is scoreless in the last four minutes and 18 seconds. And they've turned it over a couple times. Uh, Boston College has blocked a couple of shots. I think you have to get Omir more involved. I mean, they, they have to attack post. Robinson pull up, pop, and he connects. Well, of course, Robinson is one of the guys who's been pressed into service here with all these injuries. That's only his fourth basket of the season in ACC play. McLaughlin leaves it for Post, and that's an easy two for Quinton Post. Now, that was a great catch by McLaughlin because that ball was thrown behind him, and I thought he might throw his back out trying to catch it. <laughs> Going inside to Omir, muscling it against Post, who picks up the foul. That's his third. And that's one of the reasons why you go to Omir, because sometimes when a guy is playing as well as Post, your best defense is to get him in foul trouble and get him on the bench. That'll be an interesting decision for head coach Earl Grant. Post with three fouls, his team up by eight as we step aside. Bravo! You use the Quicksilver card from Capital One with no annual fee and unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. That makes you the hero of every purchase. Ah! What's in your wallet? Yeah. Movement that inspires. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. I volunteer at a bunny rescue, and with Cricket, my bill is consistent and I have unlimited data so I can do what I love. Unlimited data for unlimited cuteness. Smile, you're on Cricket. Oh, Arby's brown sugar bacon. You always know just what to say. Arby's, we have the meat. Sometimes it takes a different approach. Set up a meeting, so how does next week sound? To see the possibilities all around you. What if I 
catch him first, then what? With Capella University's game-changing FlexPath format, get support every step of the way to help you stay on track. Imagine your future differently with Capella University. So, you like your job? I love it. What I do is really important. You give eye exams. I give fresh starts. Better vision, healthy eyes. Everybody wants that. That they do. And they don't want to spend more money than they have to. True. But good eye health? That's priceless. Hero Doc saves vision. <laughs> well, I... Hero Owl saves money. Sure. Great eye exams from great doctors at a great price. Better eye health from America's best. You know, Doug, ever since switching to Workday, you've been a real rock star. Rock star? What do you know about rock stars? Are we yeah. idle? I mean, where's the skin tight leather? The shoes are leather, right? Where's think. the unnecessary zippers? That thing! Billy, Billy, rock star is just how Doug feels when he uses Workday. Thanks, Rory. Uh, I'll show you rock star. Be a finance and HR rock star. Workday for a changing world. Billy Idol just stole your car. So what a lineup for you this weekend. This is all on Saturday. Hockey starts 3 Eastern time on ABC, Penguins and Bruins, and then it's North Carolina and Duke and our Sonic blockbuster at 6.30 Eastern time on ESPN. Then back to ABC for some NBA action, and then it all ends with the Saturday nightcap, the World Bantam Championship, UFC 299. So that is a loaded Saturday overlap season here in March. Lots of different sports going on. And after that foul, Quentin Post has indeed come out of the game. We've seen Post, you know, he plays with a great deal of emotion, and I think that's probably a pretty good idea just so he doesn't get a quick second one. I don't think he'll be on the bench long. And that rolls off the rim from Omir. He's 0 for 3 at the line tonight. On conference play, he shoots 68%, which isn't terrible, but you'd like a guy who's going to get fouled as much as he does to shoot a little bit better than that. And he's been quiet tonight, only six points to his name, and he's usually up over 17. So Miami really bringing the pressure now. This isn't just to get time run off the clock. They were trying to take that one. So now, how does Boston College play with post out of the game? Well, so far tonight, it's been poorly, but Zachary got a good look, and that's tipped in by Mighty. Zachary drew everybody once again, and Mighty didn't have to do very much except just tip that one in. You're not going to get an easier opportunity than that. You have to think Miami goes more to Omir with post out, a triple team on him. Finds Cleveland. He attacks the rack and is fouled. They're going to call that on McLaughlin, I think. This is a really nice pass out by Omir, and you can see three guys are around Omir, and they all come after Cleveland. I think they called the foul on McLaughlin because he dropped those arms. Mm. Mighty did a pretty good job jumping, going straight up in the air, but. It, it's not really a matter of going straight up in the air. I don't think either one of those guys went straight up in the air. They started at one spot and jumped to another spot. And so that's not vertical. Even though you don't come down, you, if you jump into a guy, that's a foul. Referees call that a point A to point B. If you start at point A and go to point B and there's contact, you're responsible for it, even if you keep your hands straight up in the air. Madsen. He's missed his last three threes after he was hot to start the second half. Well, you know how shooters are. They're hot, and then they never get cool. It's just a matter of waiting <laughs> to get hot again. Exactly. Robinson, that rattles in and out no good. Robinson at 0 for 3 before that shot in ACC play from three-point range. So if you're Boston College, you might not mind that. Miami's made one of their last eight. They have gone ice cold here and now trailing by seven. That's a tough shot, that floater. We've seen guys make that and they make it look easy, but it's not. It's a hard shot. Got to get the touch just right. Here's Omir bodying up by Mighty. Lefty hook. Beautiful post work by Norchad Omir. If you're going to double-team him, you've got to get to him more quickly than that. 
Once he turns to the basket, it's going to be hard. Poked away by Poplar. Falls to O'Meara, three on two. And Bensley Joseph had it slip out of his hands. Well, that's a real break for Boston College. Mighty did a very poor job going after that ball. He stood there at half court and waited for the ball to come to him. And here, Harris goes, but he waits until O'Meara picks up his dribble, and O'Meara just waits for him to fly by and then gets an easy basket. Earl Grant elects to take the timeout. Miami's cut the lead to five, and Quinton Post is checking back into the game for the Eagles. And not only does Earl Grant elect to take the timeout, but he get, takes his full timeout. So he takes a 60-second timeout, so he's obviously got a lot he wants to discuss with his guys. And Boston College's offense just has not run smoothly without Post in the game. And even, even though the lead is down to just five, yeah, Post we went out get for Post two back minutes, in. Yeah. and Boston College lost three points off their lead. Good time to remind you during the timeout, five college basketball games on Saturday on ESPN. The two Sonic blockbusters, number one, Houston welcomes Kansas at four, and that's followed up with North Carolina and Duke, the best rivalry the sport has to offer. And we were talking earlier how difficult it is to vote for the ACC first team. It's R.J. Davis, and then who knows? Well, that's what I think. You know, Davis has had such a fabulous year, but there's all kinds of people who have had great years in the Atlantic Coast Conference who have piled up numbers. While they may not be Tim Duncan-esque numbers, such as Post has put up, guys have great numbers, and they've really been valuable to their teams. Hunter Salas from Wake Forest has had a great year. Where's Virginia without Reese Beekman? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like Armando Baycott has gone on vacation. You know, he's had a pretty good year, too. Kyle Filipowski has had a good year. P.J. Hall. I mean, there's a lot of people. A guy like Blake Hinson at Blake, Pittsburgh absolutely. should be in the conversation. No, again, you can you can have a conversation and you can mention 20 names. Yes, yeah, we did. Who can all be in the conversation. <laughs> That's what we did during the Boston College shoot-around is in three minutes we named 20 guys who could be in consideration. And not only who could be, but who ought to be. Yeah, and Quinton Post is one of them. Back into the game here for BC. Zachary stripped cleanly. Great defense, Bensley Joseph. Missed the finish on the other end. That's some defense, though. Post, great pass. McLaughlin misses the layup. Both of these teams trading missed layups here. You can't make a better pass than Post just made. So McLaughlin owes him an assist somewhere. Takes the three. This is the three. Boy, Miami just can't yeah. get their hands on the rebound. I mean, Poplar just couldn't grab the ball. There was nobody from BC in the area. And Jim Laranega, you can see his frustration. You can understand it. Now, this is the third opportunity on this possession for Boston College. Step back three, Harris. Too much on it. Long rebound. Falls to Jobe. He goes coast to coast at his foul. Harris is now 0 for 6 from beyond the arc, and this is a tough, tough shot. And when you take a tough shot, you get the long rebound, and that's like turning it over, and... McLaughlin trying to make another good defensive play comes over the back. And that's McLaughlin's third foul. Jay, it's so important. Your offense really has to help your defense. And you help your defense by not turning it over and by taking good shots. Even if you miss them, if you take a good shot, you're in position to get back. And the Hurricanes haven't helped themselves from the free throw line no. either. They have really struggled from there tonight. Six of ten. And Joe Bay connects on the second one. Four-point game. Norchad O'Meara back in it for Miami. So Nwoko and O'Meara playing together. Yeah, the opposite of small ball right now for the Hurricanes. 
Zachary, three, got it, Jaden Zachary. That's a big, big basket and from Zachary who has seemed reluctant to shoot at times today. Jim Larinaga calls, calls timeout. another timeout. So he only has one remaining for the final eight minutes and 22 seconds of this game. Not happy with how his team has played in this second half. The Eagles outscoring the Hurricanes by 11 since halftime. And Jaden Zachary has BC up seven. Come on in to the Chuck Stop. Everything you need for a road trip to the Final Four. I'm impressed, Chuck. You're gonna need these. Pumpkin spike latte and these mud flaps. I can use these. Jen. Hey, guys. Mm, lucky socks. Wonder what Jim Nance smells like. I smell divine. I'm earning double miles with my Capital One Venture card, so it's on me. Well, what up with you and these subs? Man's got to eat. <laughs> When you have a history of greatness, the real challenge starts after the finish line. When victory alone isn't enough, you raise your bar, keep dreaming, and go beyond the limits of what you ever thought possible. The new 2024 Ridgeline Passport and Pilot, part of our most rugged trail sport lineup yet. From Honda, Right now, you can get a free foot log at Subway. Just buy any foot log in the app and get one free. Like the Titan Turkey, piled high with fresh sliced turkey, or the Outlaw with juicy steak and melted pepper jack cheese. Just scan the QR code and enter promo code FLBOGO. Oh, I'm all over this deal. It only works on the other side of the screen, buddy. Chuck, you still got a landline in your house. Here, just take my free sub. Order now on the Subway app. playground at visitcalifornia.com. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Get the new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage so you can take all the pics. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Apple Watch SE all on us, only on Verizon. You know, Doug, ever since switching to Workday, you've been a real rock star. Rock star? What do you know about rock stars? Are we yeah. idle? I mean, where's the skin tight leather? The shoes are leather, I Where's think. the unnecessary zippers? Fat thing! Billy, Billy, rock star is just how Doug feels when he uses Workday. Thanks, Rory. Uh, I'll show you rock star. Be a finance and HR rock star. Workday for a changing world. Billy Idol. Now, two teams that enter tonight desperate for a win ahead of the ACC tournament. Both Boston College and Miami enter tonight on losing streaks. Boston College looking for their first win here in Coral Gables since 2010. <laughs> and for Miami, this would be eight straight losses, the most in 20 years and certainly the longest losing streak under Jim Laranega. Jim Laranega called that timeout because he wanted to get his lineup adjusted. He wanted to get Cleveland back in the game. Omir can't convert the second chance points. Cleveland grabs it. He misses the layup. They've had three shots on that possession. Roll off the rim. It's been that kind of night for Miami. The Hurricanes trailing by seven. Certainly it's been that kind of second half. But Jim Laranega would tell you it's been that kind of season. Wow, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> the post tangled up with George. I mean, this was a Miami team that coming off that final four, you do lose Isaiah Wong and Jordan Miller, but you do return a lot of pieces from that team, and it just has not gone their way. Well, and that's true, but they also lost Harlan Beverly. They also lost Anthony Walker, guys who didn't play a lot, but when they did play, they provided valuable minutes off the bench. 
And so to lose four guys who were key to that kind of a run, and it's difficult to put a team together like that, particularly now when you have the injury problems. Yep. It's just hard to develop. Poplar gives up the three. Cleveland wide open, and he makes BC pay. And Boston College has looked a little shaky at times against this pressure. Post passes out of the double team. Harris walks it over the line. Let's see if you're Harris. I don't know that you want to wait for the press. Yeah, he let them catch up to him. Yeah, the heck with that. <laughs> Post to League Bay, and he's fouled. Uh, League Day is not a very good free throw shooter, only 50% in conference play. Hadn't been to the line that much, only 8 for 16. Well, we mentioned both teams on losing streaks. Miami, the seven-game losing streak we were talking about. For Boston College, their last win came against Miami in Chestnut Hill last month. So Earl Grant, he told us we would love to get this one, move on to Louisville, finish strong, go into the ACC tournament feeling confident, feeling good about ourselves. Well, and they still have a chance to do that, but I'm telling you, this almost looks like the first half in reverse, where Miami jumped out to a lead in the first half and BC battled back, and now Miami, they're doing a nice job staying in the game. Trailing by five within striking distance. You know, BC has had a couple of hot stretches, but Miami has hung around. Omir going right into post. Great defense by Quinton Post. Omir steals it back, though, and puts it in with the shot clock under one. Now, that's a play that's a really tough play by Harris. You're trying to save the ball, but you can't save it down there unless you're throwing it right to one of your own guys. And Norchad Omir never gave up on that possession. Great pass. Big finish. Prince of League Bay. Again, the lob passed inside to post, and he does a really nice job finding League Bay. He's surrounded, so somebody has to be open. But Miami down on the other end, they gave the ball to Omir and let Omir go after Post. And I, I don't think that's a bad play. Post made a really good defensive play, but maybe the next time he'll commit a foul. And then that would be his fourth. A big decision to make of your Earl Grant. And that was a lot of time left. They go right back to Omir. This time hands it off to Cleveland. 6 minutes left in regulation. Miami trailing by 5. Poplar deep 3. Way off the mark. Right back to a league bay and he draws the foul again. Prince of League Bay has caused Miami problems here in the second half. Yeah, he sure has, and the league bay is a guy who, you know, he plays about 20 minutes a game in conference play, but he has been very active down on the inside. Just one for three from the foul line tonight. Makes the first. As we said, he's about a 50% free throw shooter, so he's right on par here. But if you're going to play off of somebody and foul somebody, a league day is probably the guy. Still a two possession game. Miami shooting just one of six from three. And oh that my. is way off the mark, but Cleveland there to clean up the spill. Well, that looks like he was almost passing it to himself. <laughs> And if that ball hits the rim, Boston College probably has a chance to get the rebound. Deep pass, finds Zachary. Spins his way free, can't make the layup. We've seen a lot of missed layups tonight, both sides. And Robinson lost the handle. 
Well, Poplar's really surprised Robinson with that pass. <laughs> I think Robinson was looking to go to the basket to get a rebound. The post misfires from three. Poplar keeps it in play. Plays become a little ragged here it all has. of a sudden. Deep three, Joseph. Can't connect. Really good rebound by Harris. I, you know, Joseph has shot the three very well, particularly in the last couple games, but that was a Caitlin Clark range three. <laughs> I don't know that that's what Jim Laranega was looking for. Uh, Joseph made the first two threes he took tonight, but he's missed the last three. Boston College leading by four. A league bay taken out by his own player. Zachary, the momentum carried him into a league bay. I mean, that's an easy layup for a league bay of Zachary. Doesn't go into him. Well, I think that Earl Grant is saying that Omir pushed Zachary into him. I thought it was his own momentum that carried him in. Well, I, I did too, but it's possible the officials are going to go look and okay. see. And if that's the case, if he did push him into him, then that's a flagrant foul. Right. And it would be a flagrant foul because a flagrant foul is contact that is excessive and or unnecessary. And this isn't excessive, but it might be unnecessary. I don't know that he ever touched him. I don't think he did. You know, maybe he touched him at the end, but he was bouncing off one of his own guys. Here he comes here and watch. He's going to run right into Joseph. And he's trying to catch himself, Amir. He, he's not yeah. pushing him. There's no push there. His arms are extended, but there's no push. His arms are extended because he's tripping. Right. He's tripping over Joseph, and he's trying to stop himself from falling down. You know, I don't know what the officials are going to see, but I, I didn't see any contact there that would rise to the level of a flagrant foul. Keith Kimball, Brent Hampton, and Ted Valentine, and now it's Valentine who goes over to the monitor to take a look. I would leave this as it was called on the floor. Well, that, that's, what, that's what I would do, too. But again, the officials, they're... they're Earl Grant was very upset about that play, and I think that's why they're going to look at it, and you want to make sure that... Let's take a look at it again. See, Omir actually steps away, and then he runs into Joseph, does Zachary, and then Zachary also runs into Omir. Right. Even before that play, a chaotic sequence took yes. over this game. Both teams missing layups. Well, chaos, chaos is a good way to describe what has been going on. I just, I, I, I don't see it. But then again, we're not the ones who have to see it. So Keith Kimball just came over to our broadcast location and told us that they are going to upgrade the foul to a flagrant one. So Boston College is going to get two free throws. And the ball. And the ball. That is a big call in this game, particularly because we just saw four or five replays and didn't think that it would get upgraded. But Well, again, again, it's one of those situations where I, I just think he was off balance. But there's no question, there's no question that as Omir fell forward, he did put both of his hands on Zachary. Or on, on yeah, on Zachary. I thought he, as he was coming down, he extended his arms, but I don't know if there was ever a push. Not bad. Now the interesting thing is, who's gonna shoot the free throw? Zachary is gonna shoot the free throw. Okay. Well, that's, because who that's, was that's the person who was pushed, yes. And that's much better for Boston College because the league bay is 50%, and Zachary in conference play is 85. The flagrant one, you know, not a legitimate play on the ball, excessive or unnecessary. And then you see the third one, a push from behind, and that's what the officials deemed. 
Zachary buries them both, and Boston College has the ball. So instead of and, Miami and so ball down four, it's Boston College ball up, up six. six. So it's that's a, that's a, that's a tough call. You can see in looking at it that uh, why they would say okay, that meets the definition, but I, I'm not sure that was a flagrant foul. Still a two-possession game, Miami within striking distance, but it's BC in control with a little more than four minutes left in regulation. Great ball movement, Poplar a three, no good. Battle for the rebound, Quinton Post diving for it. He has made so many little plays like that one that have added up all night long. But McLaughlin has a mismatch inside against Joseph. They couldn't find him, though. High low oh. into post. Jump ball. The possession arrow stays with Boston College. The Eagles clinging to a six-point lead. This will be a fun finish here at the ACC. When you're great, your game does the talk. In the ACC, our speech volume. Three of the last eight NCAA championships. 99 NCAA tournament wins since 2015. Eight NCAA titles in the last 22 years. Six of the top 30 winningest programs in Division I, most of any conference. It's not bragging if it's true. Greatness is what we do. The ACC accomplished greatness. Say hello to future you. You made some bad money moves. So no vacations for you. Never got a credit card with rewards. No way we'll never see your fjords. All these places will never go. Here isn't us in Mexico. Don't make your future you hate you. Start making smarter financial decisions today. NerdWallet, finance smarter. Here at Papa John's, we know our stuff. We know how to hand stuff our crust with more flavors than anyone else. <laughs> like the garlicky seasoned cheese and our garlic epic stuffed crust pizza. We're talking Papa John's iconic garlic sauce flavor mixed with cheese and stuffed right into the crust of your pizza. <laughs> I mean, no one stuffs the crust like Papa John's. <laughs> Try our garlic epic stuffed crust pizza. Available now only at Papa John's. Ooh, number seven future renew day cream. Reverse is damage. What, like from sleeping in my makeup? Reverse visible skin damage with a world first peptide technology. Who's got damage besides all of us? Don't regret, just reverse. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh, yes, problem. You need Verizon. Get the new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage. So you can take all the pics. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Apple Watch SE all on us. Only on Verizon. This time belongs to those who want it most. Where youth is tested. And greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. The XFL and the USFL merged to create one powerful spring football league called the UFL. Wow. Spring football Incredible. is here to stay. The UFL season kicks off March 30th. Now, champ week is upon us. The ACC men's basketball tournament tips off less than a week from now to Eastern on Tuesday. ACC Network from Washington, D.C. Take a look at our bracket as it stands tonight. Miami and Boston College, they'll both certainly be playing in that first round. And it looks like if Boston College can hold this six-point lead, they'll be playing 13 or better. And Miami, if they lose this game, they'll be locked into that 14th seed. Yes. Because if they lose, that'll be two losses to Boston College, so BC will hold any tiebreakers against Miami. But it's it's been a weird game in this last stretch where you used the perfect word. The game got really chaotic. And then to have that uh, very tough flagrant foul called on Miami. So Quinton Post, shot clock down to two. Can't connect there. He's had a good night, though. 19 points, nine rebounds for Post. Cleveland misses the layup. 
Without, that was a layup, but it was in tough traffic. Right. And that's kind of been Miami's second half. They've gotten it in close, but through traffic, a nice block there. Falls out to McLaughlin. Shot clock at five. I don't know that Harris knows it. He does now. Let's it fly and hits Claudel Harris from deep. Well, he's now one for seven shooting threes, and that was a desperation heave. That is, that is a big basket. It's a shot you can probably live with if you're Jim Laranaga, but it goes in for Claudel Harris. Zachary, quick hands, poked it from behind, and now BC, a nine-point lead with the ball, 2.20 to play. It's the Eagles' largest lead of the night. Well, you can see it up in the top of the screen, in the middle of the screen, the shot clock's running down. Harris has to take that one. Wow, that was a long one. And it's now or never time for Miami. Jim Laranega uses his final timeout. Hurricanes trailing by nine. This is a Miami team that led by 10 in the first half. They were in control of this game. Well, that's, yeah. that's what I was talking about before. They were in control of the game for most of the first half. And then Boston College battled back right before the end of the half. Maybe the biggest shot of this game so far, other than that three by Harris, was the three to end the first half by Quinton Post that gave BC some confidence coming out at, of the locker room at halftime. But again, Boston College with Post and Madsen, they made some shots in the second half. And Miami, you know, this is the kind of year it's been before everybody started getting hurt. In non-conference play, they shot the three very well, scored over 86 points a game. And in conference play, everything has slowed down just a little bit. And tonight, only 23% from behind the arc. And this is a Miami team that relies so heavily on the three-point shot that you just can't afford to shoot 20% from three in a game like this. Well, we looked at each other in halftime and said Boston College had turned it over seven times. Had shot given really up seven poorly. offensive rebounds, had shot 38% overall, 25% from three, and they were only four down. Right. And they have played a lot better in this second half and built a nine-point lead, their largest lead of the night, trying to hang on to it on the road and snap a four-game losing streak. Hurricanes out of the timeout. Cleveland in attack mode. Turns around. Didn't get a good look. Falls to O'Meara. Right into Post. He misses from in close. And Post is not going to get credit for that rebound, but he tipped it out of the reach of O'Meara. So now you don't want to completely take your foot off the gas if you're Boston College, but you can afford to take some time. You don't have to rush anything. Harris with seven seconds to shoot. Just hit a deep three on the last possession for BC. Madsen, he heaves it as the shot clock sounds, misses it. McLaughlin almost put it in for an and one. Instead, we'll get two at the line. Well, that's instinctive if you're McLaughlin. You get the ball there, you're going to put it back up. But he could have easily kicked it out and run another 20 seconds. This is really tough. Got the ball, and now I think he's off balance. That's why he put it back up there. He didn't really have a chance to kick it out. And McLaughlin, he's been relatively quiet today. He's had a little bit of foul problems. Pretty good free throw shooting there. This is the first. He is 72% on the year. Still a chance to give BC a 10-point lead here. Missed them Misses both. Misses them both. So now if you're Miami, you got to get moving. Joseph splits the double team, tried to get it to Cleveland and turns it over. But you got to go quickly, but you can't be in a giant hurry, and that's what happened that time. The scoring drought that is now extended past four minutes here for Miami. It's allowed Boston College to balloon this lead. 
Well, now Miami really doesn't have much choice. No. Down by nine with only a minute and 11 seconds left to go in the game. You need the ball, and maybe the only way you can get the ball is to foul. It's a one and one here. Here's the biggest problem for Miami. They are one of their last 17 from three. You're going to need to make some down the stretch here. Post misses the front end. Boston College has left the door open. They've missed three free throws in a row. Need points in a hurry. Omir drives right into post, and he turns it over. He fell down. Four turnovers down the stretch here for Miami. I think now if you're Miami, you get a foul quickly. Yeah, way too much time coming off the clock here. The Hurricanes electing to play this possession out, down nine, and now the clock will be big time against them. Deep three, Harris hits it again. Claudel Harris drills two deep threes. And even though Cleveland makes the dunk, it's all for naught. Harris for Boston College down the stretch of this game. Has been terrific. Poplar, he misses fires from three. And Boston College is going to win it on the road. Impressive comeback by Boston College. Now the Eagles snap a 10-game losing streak here in Coral Gables. And a four-game losing streak on the season. Earl Grant's team with a big road win.